Well folks, welcome back to another diecast video and today we'll be taking a look at my diecast finds that I've acquired over the last couple months. These are pretty much just Matchbox and Hot Wheels, but I purchased these from several different retailers over the last couple months and depending on where you went the price could be anywhere from 98 cents to I believe $1.30. And I think I managed to pick up uh, some great finds for my collection. But we'll go ahead and take a look here at what all I've managed to get. Before I get into looking at these, I do want to mention that I'm only going to be looking at these six cars right here. And my reason for this is because if you go back to my last diecast finds video, I actually showed these three cars here in that video. And I really don't see any point in looking at them again. However, if you do want an up close and in detailed look at these, I will provide a link to that video. However, in this video, we're only gonna be looking at these cars here. The first one we'll look at is this 2016 Toyota Tacoma by Matchbox. And when I first saw this truck, I really liked the look of it. However, after getting it out of the box and setting it on the turntable here, I'm starting to see some things about it that I don't like, mainly to do with the windshield plastic. Because if you look here, you can see it's just completely blacked out. There's actually no interior detail in this truck and I'm a little disappointed because I've seen that on other Matchbox cars as of late and I assume that little bit of detail with the interior is completely omitted to save extra steps and cost in the manufacturing process. Now while that may be a money saver for the company, it's definitely not something that I myself am impressed with and I do feel it does take away from the look of this truck a little bit. But there are some things about this that I do like. First off would be the paintwork. I like the BF Goodridge logo right there. Also like the stripes on the truck. Some people might not care for those, but I think they look pretty good. And of course the uh, white is also very nice. I do like these wheels. These are uh, one of my favorite uh, Matchbox wheels that are out there. And I think they give this truck a really good look. And another thing with this is it has the tent on the back, which personally I don't care for, but it is removable and you can just have the open pickup bed. A little disappointing you got these holes in the wheel wells now, but uh, the fact that this little tent detail can be removed is uh, positive in the case that you don't want it like I do. So uh, me personally, I'd be happy with just having the truck as you see it right here. And I actually think this would look pretty cool uh, for like a tire shop or something, you know, possibly a delivery or a service truck. The next one is this 1955 Chevy Bel Air, and what really drew my attention to this car was the metallic cherry red paint job on this. I just really like the look of that, and unfortunately that's about the only positive thing I can say about this car, because when it comes to other aspects of it, such as the interior detail and the wheels and these Hot Wheels logos on the doors, I'm just not a fan. And my plan is to actually tear this car down, replace the wheels, get rid of the Hot Wheels logos, and repaint the interior to make it look more fitting for what I want in my 164 scale collection. And I should also mention, I do like the trim detail we have on the side of the car. I don't think that's bad at all. Plus, we do have some of the Bel Air uh, you know, logos and such on the side, and we also got the one on the front of the hood here. But, you know, again, the main focus for me was definitely this metallic red paint job. And I wish I could say more about this car, but the way it sits right now, there's not a whole lot I can say about it. Continuing on with the 1950s Chevy theme, we have what I believe is a 1950s Chevy pickup truck. Now, I'm not exactly sure on the year because all it says on the box is La Troca, so your guess is as good as mine. But anyways, I gotta say that I'm not really a fan of the overall look of this truck. I mean, I do like the metallic gold paint job on it, but the graphics just don't cut it for me. Uh, I didn't really buy this truck though for the look of it because my plans are to actually do a custom with it. I want to go ahead and cut the pickup truck bed off, extend the frame, put a flatbed on it, get some better wheels and tires, and of course give it a repaint to get it to looking the way I want it to look. But, you know, I just saw this and I was really liking the look because I know it's a 1950 Chevy and I thought it'd be pretty cool for a custom. Now, I am wondering whether or not I'm gonna leave the visor on the front uh, or try to go in and remove that. It's part of the casting. 
it might not look too bad if it just went in after I painted the cab and uh, painted this little bit chrome but overall you know it's a pretty good looking truck but definitely it does not suit my taste with the current paint job that it has we're getting back into matchbox now and something i should have mentioned before was that the last two cars i showed were actually hot wheels but this here is a 2021 ford bronco and this is another one i bought mainly just because i like the color of this this is like a metallic blue and i think it looks really sharp and originally i thought the rims on this were chrome but they look to be more of like a gunmetal color and that's another aspect to this car that i really like and as you can see here we've also got the interior detail again the clear windshield plastic which like i said earlier i am not a fan of just the blacked out windshield no interior i like to see those little details on these cars even if they are the inexpensive ones but other than uh, that there's not really much else I can say you got the spare tire on the back uh, Do have a little logo right there next to the tail light and I also noticed you know the tail lights are painted I uh, don't often see that And I guess when it comes around here, you can also take a look at the grill You can see we've got the headlights and the Ford Bronco there uh, also got side view mirrors cast into this uh, you know again, it just looks really good and I think little extra paint would uh, make some of the other details on this car stand out. We're back into the Hot Wheels again, and this one I got, I guess, solely just for the reason it looked cool and I had to have it. But it's a McLaren F1, and I recognize that name from, I'm guessing, Top Gear. But when it comes to this car, uh, I'm not exactly sure what all to say about it. I do like the orange paint, whether or not you'd actually see one of these in this color, I don't really know but it goes well with the black uh, bits on the car plus the chrome rims details like the headlights and such are just tampos that are stamped on there is a uh, interior detail in this car you do have the plastic uh, windshield glass although it looks to be tinted and I do like the fact that we have uh, this painted bit on the back of the car here you can see we've got the tail lights turn signals the grill etc I'm pretty sure this is a rear engine vehicle but uh, I don't know. There's not a whole lot else I can say about this. I'm not too crash hot on these sports cars. Now I saved the best for last and they call this Kit Super Pursuit Mode. And of course it's the car from Knight Rider. Now unfortunately I don't know a whole lot about the Knight Rider series. I mean I've seen a few episodes. I definitely know uh, some details about Kit. But as to... Uh, all the little details about the Knight Rider series I couldn't tell you because I don't know probably spent too much time watching Adam 12 But because they call this kit super pursuit mode My guess is that we have something like a battering ram on the front of the car here And it also looks like there's something on the back to beef it up a little bit You can also see that we've got uh, The open interior of the car there is some details in there, which I do like and the wheels, I don't know how accurate these are. Uh, we do have the night uh, license plate on the back. But I'm going to guess that Hot Wheels has probably done a version of this car in their Real Rider series. Which, when you take a mainline car, which is what we have here, and put it up against one of the cars from the Real Riders, uh, it's just no comparison. Far better detail, more die cast, better paintwork, etc. Uh, also have rubber tires and I would also have to guess that there's some other manufacturers out there that have probably done versions of kit in 164 scale as well uh, I don't know I bought this car you know because again I knew of the Knight Rider series and I thought it looked great but I don't know if I'll be hanging on to this or not well panning across here you guys can get another look at all of the cars that we just looked at in this video and I have to say I do like all of these in one way or another. Like I said, some of them I'll just be putting into my collection as is. Others I'll be using for customs. And probably the one I'm really liking the most definitely has to be that 55 Bel Air. Just with that metallic cherry red. That is a really sharp looking car and I'm really looking forward to customizing that and making it look even better than it does now. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap things up for this video quite pleased with what I have here. 
And of course, this isn't all that I've managed to acquire. I had those couple duplicates that I showed earlier. But, you know, I'm really happy with these six cars right here. And you guys can also let me know which one of these is your favorite in the comments down below. But I'm going to head off now, and I'll have some more diecast content coming up for you here shortly.